So how exactly do you check SpaceX Starlink speeds in your specific area before you buy? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. You know I love that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe something harder. <laughs> Hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about the internet and how to find out how fast SpaceX Starlink is in your area before you buy it. A lot of people have been asking me this question for the last like year and a half. Is there any way to check? Well, for the longest time, I'd say, listen, go over to Facebook or go to Instagram, find people in your area and have them do speed tests to find out what their speeds are so you know about what your speeds will be. Well, finally, SpaceX Starlink is more transparent. They are now telling you before you buy about what your speeds are going to be. This is awesome. This just happened about two, three days ago, so I wanted to bring it to your attention. So hopefully it helps you make that decision. Am I gonna invest in SpaceX Starlink or I'm gonna go the T-Mobile route or maybe Verizon home route or maybe even now the AT&T Internet Air route? Whichever it is, which works best for you? Where do you get your best speeds? Where do you get your best broadband for the money? So I'm gonna show you how to get in there and look this up. But before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up. They're 100% free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you enjoy this content or get any value out of it at all, consider throwing it a thumbs up. That is very, very helpful. And if you haven't subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you'd like. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist just for you. Go check it out when you're done watching this video. There's about 180 videos of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, when to buy it, and of course, the why. This channel is all about the why. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN or if you need a static IP address or do port forwarding, check out Pure VPN. They gave us a discount. 15 additional percent off just by using promo code JCristina at checkout or clicking the link that I'll have for you down below, which is jcristina.com forward slash VPN. So now that the housekeeping is done, let's get right into this. So I'm going to share my screen with you. But before I want to preface all of this with if you don't remember or if you have never seen SpaceX Starlink, if you go to starlink.com slash map, you will see a map of the country, actually the map of the world, and you can kind of zoom in, and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Over the course of this time frame, that website has only showed three bits of data. Either the service is not available to you at all, or it is available, but you will be put on a waiting list. That waiting list might be a week, might be a month, might be a year, or finally, it is available, meaning that you can actually order it today, and you will get it within a week or two, and you can start using it immediately. That is what has been always on that map. Well, that map is now changed as of a couple of days ago. Not only does the website provide you with information if you have no service available to you or if you're going to be placed on a waiting list or if you have service available immediately, but it gives you three additional points of data. And these data points are download speed, upload speed and latency. This is awesome. So instead of me just jabbering on and on about this, let's jump into my screen so I can show you exactly what this is all about and how to do this for yourself. So here we are. This is the web page over at starlink.com forward slash map. Now, finally, finally, guys, finally, we have a means of having this transparency between us and SpaceX Starlink to know if we're going to get service, if the service is going to be good, and how good the service is actually going to be. So as we can see over on the left-hand side, it says availability. Right now, this shows you what is available. 
All these dark areas are a waiting list, meaning if you're in one of these dark little patches here, you're going to be placed on a waiting list. We don't know if the waiting list is going to be for a week, for a month or a year, but if you're in a light area like we see here or like here we have Florida. The south side of Florida is 100% available, whereas the north side of Florida from central up north is a waiting list. So if you're down here in the light side, you'll be able to get coverage immediately. You can order SpaceX Starlink. It's available now. They will send it to you and you can have service immediately. Well, they have added to this. Now you can see that there's a little tick here. When we click on this, we not only have availability, but we have download speed, upload speed, and latency. Let's click on download speed and see what happens. There we go. Now you can see everything changed. Now, what we can tell here is just like before, we have different grades of blue. So basically this is broken down into like 20 percentile. As you can see over here, the dark areas are speeds between 25 and 50 megabits. The next area is 50 to 75. This middle blue is 75 to 100. This blue is 100 to 125 megabits. And finally, the light area is 125 to 150 plus megabits download speed. Now, if we click on upload speed, it does the exact same thing. It gives you this breakdown or the scale. At the very bottom, we can see five to 10 megabits. And at the top speed, we're gonna see 20 to 25 megabits. Now, as far as latency, it goes anywhere from 25 milliseconds up to 75 milliseconds where it tops off at. Let's just go back to download speeds just to check this out. Let me back up just a little bit. So that's all we have to do is hover over any state and it's gonna give you an average download. So if we come down to Florida and hover over it, we can see the average download speeds are 41 megabits up to 130 megabits down. If we come up to Georgia, we can see the speeds are a little bit slower, coming in at 36 megabits to topping off at about 105 megabits down. If we change this to upload speeds, you can see the entire map is pretty much identical. Everything is showing pretty close to nine to 17 megabits here in Florida. In Georgia, it's nine to 16 megabits, South Carolina, nine to 16, and so on and so forth. It's all about the same. Now, if we back up a little bit, we can see Nevada is actually quicker between 11 megabits and 20 megabits, but everything else is pretty much the same. They're all around the same speeds. Illinois, nine to 17 megabits, Kansas, nine to 16 megabits, all about the same. Over time, this is going to get faster. But remember this, this is very important. Let's go back to download speeds. These download speeds have to do with the speed of residential coverage. This has nothing to do with business or roam or mobility. Absolutely nothing. These download, upload, and latency speeds are only for residential coverage. Now these residential prices are anywhere from $90 to $120, and that really depends on where you are. Now, some people are like, well, why are some people paying 90 and other people are paying 120? And what that has to do with is congestion. If you're in a location where there's like no one, all right, it's just like you and a bunch of horses, all right, and maybe some cows in a field, Chances are the birds overhead, I call them birds, the satellites are not doing anything. So giving you coverage for $90 really doesn't matter because it's not being used anyways. So it's better to get 90 from you than 120 because 120, you're probably not gonna spend that money on it. So that's why they do it. Whereas in congested areas, you're gonna be paying full fare, which is that $120 per month for residential coverage. Now we can see that there is a big range of speeds, anywhere from 25 megabits down all the way up to about 120. 20 megabits down. Some people have said that the reason why there is such a disparity in speeds has to do with the amount of congestion in an area. And while that is absolutely true, there's another factor that they never talk about. 
And that factor is how far away are you from your closest ground station and how far away are you from your closest pop or that ground station is from the pop or the point of presence. This is very, very important, especially when it comes to latency. So there are multiple factors that go into the speeds that you're getting, as well as the latency numbers, those millisecond numbers that you see. When I was connected to a pop down in Miami, because I'm in Palm Beach, I was getting about 25 milliseconds latency, which was really sweet. Now I'm connected to a pop or a point of presence that's in Atlanta, Georgia, 700 miles north of me instead of 70 miles south of me. Now I'm getting latency of about anywhere from about 38 to about 50 milliseconds, 45 milliseconds. So it is definitely a lot worse. And I would love for them to hook me back up to Miami, but there's no way to get them to do that anymore. Now, if we jump back over on this screen, as we can see the download, if we click on download, it shows the different download speeds. The only problem that I have here is like, for example, if we go into Florida, the entire state from the panhandle all the way down to the keys is all of the same between 41 and 130 megabits down speed. What I would like to see is a little bit more detail, either divide this this county by county by county, that's just easy to do because the Starlink is sending telemetry back to Starlink. So they know what the speeds are at any given time. There's no way for them not to know this, number one. So maybe give us this information down to a county level or maybe to maybe a central, a north, south, east, and west area of a state. That will give you a little bit more, let's say, nuance to the speeds of what you are to expect when you do receive coverage or you do receive service. So I think that they are on the right track here by providing this type of transparency. Is it 100% better? No, but it is much better because now you have some transparency here. You have some idea of what kind of speeds you will be getting. Now the speeds aren't exactly what they were back when I was in beta times when we were getting like 310 megabits down and 40 plus megabits up. Things are slower. Why are they slower? Because there's a lot of people using it. They went from about 100,000 when I came on board to now 1.5 million. So it is a lot of people. And I think that within one year, we're going to see a doubling of that. About 3 million people or 3 million subscribers worldwide using Starlink. So while it's going to tax the system more, we're seeing more and more satellites launching every single week. Another 22, 22, 22 of the version 2 mini satellites going into LEO or low Earth orbit. Now, what's going to make everything better is once Starship is on board and now we can see a lot more satellites, the larger version twos, I call them the version two maxis in space. Those are like going to be four, five, six times the capacity of the current satellites that are being used. So that's going to definitely help service a lot. Now, some people ask me, how do I do speed tests properly? I'm going to show you real quick because this is very important. Some people do not do speed tests properly and then they come back and they tell me these weird speeds that just make no sense and they're actually like testing their Wi-Fi speed and not the speed of their modem or their router. So anyways, this is what I would suggest. Go over to speedtest.net. Let's go ahead and do this together. Matter of fact, we will do a speed test. Maybe I'll do a couple of speed tests for you right now. As you can see, we're connected to SpaceX Starlink, I'm gonna hit go. And while that's testing, I wanna tell you exactly how to do this. Number one, you wanna test the exact same server over and over and over. So right now it says that we're connected to Sparklight. So going forward, every single test I do, I'm going to test on Sparklight. Now I can go and change servers, but that's not going to help me because I want to get a baseline from a specific server. I don't want it to be varying continuously. 
correctly. So we're gonna keep on testing. That was one test that we got here. We're gonna test again. Once again, we're gonna test with Sparklight. What is also very important here is you want to test using an ethernet cable. You don't wanna test with your Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi signal comes in and out. You just don't know how good that Wi-Fi is going to be. So test using your ethernet cable so that you know you're going to get your best results. Also, what you wanna do is do 10 tests, 10, not eight, not 12, do 10 tests, one after another after another, using the exact same server, the exact setup, the exact everything. Just keep on hitting go and retest, retest, retest. And then what you wanna do is throw out your fastest speed and you wanna throw out your slowest speed. And then take that eight and do an average, a mean of those eight speeds. That will be your download speed, your upload speed, and your latency. Do the exact same thing for all three data sets and you're gonna have a really good idea of what speed you're getting at that specific moment. Now bear in mind, that is a specific moment in time. These satellites are moving at 17,000 miles per hour. All right, so you're gonna be catching on to different ones and they're gonna handshake as they come by and you might have some outages because of that. So understanding this, you know that if you do a speed test now and you do a speed test in an hour from now, you're gonna be using different satellites and you're not going to get the exact same speed. So many people say, why am I not having consistent speeds? The reason being is you're not plugged in terrestrially through a cable in your house. You're plugged in through a satellite satellite, right? So that satellite, once again, is moving and you're going to be using different satellites continuously. So what I do notice, matter of fact, we'll stop this testing right now. Let's go back over to the Starlink website. Now I'm going to stay on download speeds. We're not going to go to upload, but let me back up a little bit. I want to show you something. Do you see the map? Over here in the US, we have a lot of dark colors. These dark colors show us anywhere from about 25 megabits up to 100 megabits down speed. But now look at this in Europe. Look at this. Doesn't matter where you go. If we go into Spain, 162 megabits to 245 megabits. France, 120 megabits to 205 megabits. Poland, 144 megabits to 220 megabits. If we come into Germany, 119 to 203. Norway, 109 to 200. Finland, 113 to 193. You can see these differences. Matter of fact, if we go into the Ukraine, currently in war conditions, 68 to 221 megabits down. Romania, 157 by 228, so on and so forth. This is amazing to me, but the reason this is, guys, is because once again, it has to do with congestion. There is a lot less people using SpaceX Starlink in Europe than they are in the US. Why is that? Well, in Europe, they have a ton of fiber on the ground, number one. Number two, their 5G is actually 5G. And some of these folks in Europe, like my family, are getting a gigabit connection from their 5G wireless phones. It is crazy. Whereas in the United States, we don't see those speeds. So people are moving into Starlink to try to get something, get anything, especially folks that are in RVs or are on the move that can't find a tower. Starlink is perfect for them because they can use it anywhere on the go. They could just set it up in the middle of nowhere on a desert somewhere. Whereas if they were relying on towers, they wouldn't have any coverage at all. So anyways, I hope this is helpful. Use this information to decide if you want to get into SpaceX Starlink now, or if you want to wait. Are the speeds that you will get in your area fast enough for your use case. If it isn't, you might want to wait. If they are, get on board, get onto the waiting list if you can't get it right away. And if you can get it right away, congratulations, because then you'll join the club like us. I think that SpaceX Starlink, I know, is the best non-terrestrial internet on the planet meaning Viasat and HughesNet, which are complete garbage, SpaceX Starlinks just crushes all of this. And then there's other ones that are coming up like OneWeb and you have Amazons, which there is no satellites, for example, with Amazon Kuiper. There is no satellites in orbit as of yet. 
Bezos says that they're going to have coverage by 2024. Trust me, write it down. Say that guy told you on the web, it won't happen. Bezos will have absolutely no internet coverage to any consumers in 2024. He'll be lucky to have a beta test satellite up there to be able to test this thing out. He will not have coverage. There's just no possible way of it. Anyways, I hope you found some value in this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for getting a little vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.